Hi, I am Gigi. I am an ex-bar raiser from Amazon here at Day One Careers. Firstly, apologies for um, this up here. It's all looking very bare, I know. It is plant watering day. And also I do apologize for the sniffles. I have hay fever. So in this video, we are going to talk about raising the bar at Amazon interview and what that really means. Now this video came about because I was contacted actually by an Amazon recruiter and they asked if I had a video that explained this. She wanted to point her candidates to it. I realized I've got a, a number of videos that kind of refer to it, but nothing that was 100% dedicated. So this one is for you, Amazon recruiter, you know who you are. I hope you find it helpful. So I am gonna warn you that this is a bit of a long video with some slightly abstract kind of concepts in it, but please do stick with it if you really want to understand what you are facing into with the objective of raising the bar at Amazon interview. Let's start with thinking about what Amazon is looking for when it hires candidates and how it's a little bit different from the norms in the market. When most companies are looking for someone to hire, they want to find the best person out of everyone that applies. Now by best, broadly they mean the most skilled for the functional work and the person that fits best with their company culture. That's not really what Amazon is looking for. Essentially, Amazon thinks about hiring from two different perspectives. One, strengthening the general population of employees in the Amazon group. Second, securing an individual who will deliver excellent outcomes if they come into that specific role. The process that they take candidates through and the methodology that they use serves to achieve both of these goals. Understanding that these two perspectives exist is important if you want to get your head around what I'll call the litmus test, which they use for defining what raising the bar is. If you don't know what I mean by a litmus test, please Google it. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into it now. So let's talk about the first perspective. Sorry, banging door there, my daughter's just arrived from school. Strengthening the general population of employees in the Amazon group. This is a very clearly stated goal or Perhaps we could call it philosophy from Amazon as regards this, which is that for every new hire, that hire should serve the purpose to raise the average of the standard of Amazonians. So if every person that you bring into your organization is better than the average, then the quality of your employee performance in your company will consistently increase. So, the key question your interviewer needs to ask of themselves, answer of themselves, is does this candidate's performance, as evidenced by the data that they've gathered in the interview process, demonstrate that they are a higher performer than 50% of current Amazonians employed at the same level in similar roles? If the answer is yes, then you are considered bar raising. Now, clearly that is pretty different from most other organizations who are really quite rarely thinking about the role of an individual hire for a specific role in the context of their kind of strategic company-wide talent profile. Whereas for Amazon, in the hierarchy of criteria, the strategic goal is actually what comes first. Now, this inevitably leads to the question about how they decide what raising the bar looks like. So this is essentially assessed across two dimensions and analyzed simultaneously throughout that process. Now I know that sounds a little bit recondite, but hopefully it'll come clear when I get into the detail. The first dimension is your interviewer benchmarking the evidence that they gather to a clearly defined and documented set of standards. And I'll take you into more detail about that in a second. The second is in parallel, benchmarking that same evidence against the standard demonstrated in your interviewer's day-to-day -day interactions with current Amazonians at the same level in similar roles. 
So let's look at the first dimension, which is benchmarking the evidence gathered to a clearly defined and documented set of standards. Against, again, this operates in two dimensions. Functional, i.e. do you have the technical skills? And behavioral, do you have the leadership skills? So to talk about the behavioral, we have to reference the Amazon leadership principles. These are a set of 16 values as at June 2022, which they require their employees to operate by, a little bit like the Ten Commandments. Using the behavioral interview technique, candidates are asked questions that relate to each leadership principle. The interviewer has a set of guidelines that defines what good and not good looks like as regards the behaviors demonstrated for each of those leadership principles. They compare the answers that you give to the questions against those guidelines. The second dimension comes in now. So they'll also be thinking about how what you've shared compares to the standards demonstrated in their day-to-day -day interactions with current Amazonians at the same level in similar roles. So they're doing both of those things at the same time whilst they are reviewing the, uh, the data that you have given them. Having considered both of those dimensions, they'll then plot you on a five-point scale for the leadership principles that they've tested on or for any additional leadership principles that they didn't mean to test you on but that you gave them evidence for anyway. Now, the more that you demonstrate what good looks like against the guidelines and the more your examples reflect the standards of the above average current Amazonian, the higher your score on the five point scale, which looks like concern, some concern, mixed, some strength and then strength. You don't have to be calibrated as strength in all of the leadership principles that you're tested on. Rather, there is a point of judgment where your interviewer at the early rounds or your bar raiser at the end of your debrief has to decide if the overall picture of the calibration across all of the leadership principles that they have gathered data for suggests you are raising the bar. Ergo, you are a higher performer than 50% of current Amazon employees at the same level in similar roles. Now, if you can remember that far back, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned the second perspective through which Amazon is looking at hiring. And that was securing an individual who will deliver excellent outcomes if they come into a specific role. Now, to assess that, they use functional questioning. Questions that, probably not surprisingly, seek to analyze your skills and knowledge in your particular job family, skills area. Now, a similar calibration process will happen, but obviously what good and what not good looks like will be very specific to each job family. And honestly, some job families may have a little bit more firmly documented standards than others. Just the reality, I'm afraid. Now, it is possible to be considered as bar raising from the behavioral perspective, but not to do so from a functional point of view. And therefore, you may not get an offer. It's also possible for it to happen the other way around, where functionally you're perfect, but your behavioral evidence doesn't demonstrate that you are, you've got it, better than 50% of Amazonians at that level in similar roles. Okay. So that's it. I hope that has shed some light on raising the bar at Amazon interview. If you found it useful, please do give us a thumbs up and or drop us a little comment below. Now what you need to do is click the link here to claim your free day one careers customer obsession taster course. Watch that and you'll nail every customer obsession question asked of you in your Amazon interview. Or if you want to do that a little bit later, why don't you check out more here of our incredible insights and advice on Amazon interview preparation.